got my same shirt on, which is pretty groovy. Anyway, <laughs> does that matter? No. Cool. Hey, just thought we're just having a little side load here because it's a little bit um, early in the morning, so we thought we'd just get this out of the way. One really cool thing about being a beekeeper, well, cool thing or complicated thing, or whichever way you want to look at it, is that when you do this natural honey production, if I had a fancy ass and proper factory and I had real screens and cool shit like that, we wouldn't have this problem. Or problem? Adventure. Whatever it is. Anyway, we have this leftover honey. After you strain the honey and you get to the last little bit that's got a bit more pollen and a little bit more um, impurities in it, they won't go through the sieves. And so I've decided that I'm going to have a crack at making some beet mead. And I was reading in my mead book, I bought this book, Making Mead Like a Viking. I mean, I thought, hell, that sounded like me. I reckon that I could, I would have might been a Viking, except getting killed a bit might have sucked, but anyway. Anyway, so I was thinking I'm gonna get some honey, make some mead, but I'm gonna put a beer mixture in it, and so I'm gonna make some dark beer mead honey. So there you go, we'll have a crack at that. So this is the, um, Caps strainer, I guess, for one of a better way, but left in here, this is what I'm talking about, the last little bit of strained honey. So it didn't run through the sieve because it's got a bit too many impurities. And according to the Viking mead making book, that's just exactly what you want with a few bits of pollen and a bits and pieces of the bees left over. So I thought, we'll have a crack at this. What's the worst thing that could happen? We'll tip it out. <laughs> oh, like, anyway, I hope I don't poison anybody. Did you know the Vikings were after the Romans? After the Romans had conquered and Gone back home, the Vikings came along. I think we're just going to do it like this because it doesn't want to be in it. What do you reckon? <laughs> the only drama is I don't know how you're going to measure how much sugar we've actually got here. Measuring how much honey to alcohol in my beer could be the interesting part because I don't know how that's going to work out. But anyway, I guess if we have two, two lesser sugar, we'll have light beer. If we have too much honey, we'll have hardcore beer. <laughs> anyway, I thought this might be a bit of fun, but we'll see what happens. Seriously dangerous beer if we get all this honey in here, dude. Wow, that might be a one bottle wonder. Because I was look, I was reading up some. <clears throat> they were talking about honey. The fact that honey production's gone down quite dramatically in the world. Honey consumption's gone up because everybody's trying to be healthy, but the actual amount of honey on the market has increased. So now I would be thinking that there's some funny honey out there somewhere that isn't actually honey at all. It's probably some jolly corn syrup additive thing be jig going on. So I don't know. I think when you're down the shop buying some honey, you want to be a bit cautious. Or you could just visit our website and get some proper real honey that hasn't been bastardised. Oh, this is a bit bloody primitive, but here we go. We got some candy honey shit going on. Look at all that yummy, look at all those yummy bee legs in there. There was one recipe that had actual, the whole friggin' brood bot whole thing. I'm like, oh, that is just getting a bit out of control. But I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the Vikings were making honey like this. I'm pretty sure they didn't have plastic pots anyway. That's for damn sure. <laughs> what do they call that? Sticky fingers. So in the Viking honey mead making book, they're talking about making malt and barley and hops and God knows everything else that they want to do. So slap Mark the Bush Bee Man, he decides he'll just get a can of dark ale that's got hops and malt and barley and stuff all done for him. So anyway, we'll give that a crack. Right, so I'll rip our lid off here. Only thing is I'm just wondering, beer yeast doesn't actually get um, much above, what, six or seven percent? And if we've got too much honey in there, the yeast will die from the alcohol. So I might use a wine yeast, which will go up a bit higher. You look at that, that looks lovely. <laughs> oh crap, now I've dropped me bloody. <laughs> oh yum. Well, that's going to be lovely, isn't it? Look that lot. This is how you manage to get honey everywhere on these sort of projects. Golly gosh. Now, yeah, that can go there. Then we're gonna need some hot water in a minute. Lovely bit of dark ale. From our friends at Cooper's. That's a local home brew, not well, actually a local brewery, big brewery actually. They make some really cool beer here. Pale ales and dark ales and 
They even make these cool little kits so us home brewers can do stuff. We might just take this into the kitchen since the missus isn't home and um, we'll get some hot water in there and dissolve this up and then I'll take it down the cellar and fill it up with some cold water. And we'll stick its little air tap on and we'll just give it a week or two. I don't know that time takes too bloody flash. Maybe that's what the sugar's for. You've got to make you one day, you know, like back in the day, when our forebears were sitting around the campfire, how the hell did they come up with this crap? Did they have the wheat or the barley or the whatever this is? Now, what's that shit made out of? It's a barley, isn't it? Did they have that stored in a cave and then the cave got wet and then the barley went rotten and then they put it out and stuck it in a pot and then they drank it and all got shit faces? Is that how they made beer? I mean, kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? Like, we just take it for granted, but... Our ancestors must have been messing around and doing some messed up shit. Well, I was just thinking about brewing in general, really. I mean, it's interesting how we all sort of... Humans have been looking for a way to avoid, um, I guess, consciousness ever since ever, haven't they? Uh, the Scotch, the Scotch, Scottish guys, when they figured out how to ferment that spirit off, which would have been very interesting. I don't even actually know how they got to that. But then, the cool thing I thought was that obviously we had a fair bit of crap in it, so they tipped it through the peat moss back there in the. Well, they picked the peat moss up out of the bog and tipped the spirits through that to clean all the impurities out. So I thought that was pretty, pain, pretty clever, but how messed up is the human race? Anything to get pissed. It's very crazy shit, isn't it? <laughs> ah, including myself, here I am, with my arm knee deep in honey and a pot of beer. <laughs> you reckon this will work? <laughs> Let's take this down the cellar so it can brew off. And we get on to the, we'll get on to the real work that we're supposed to be doing today. Obviously that's the wrong lid, dickhead. <laughs> I'll give that to the cameraman to carry. <laughs> oh! Shh. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the hole. <laughs> oh, bloody hell! <laughs> Yo, at least people know why I'm happy. <laughs> Believe it or not, all of this filming is generally done sober or strung out. Now, of course, if you know anything about homebrew, you've got to get the temperature right, so we'll have a look at that. Oh, shit! Temperature gauge on the side in a minute. This should be a nasty brew. <laughs> <laughs> we're going down to about 34, which is all right. You want it round about here, somewhere about 30-ish. I haven't read the directions on the beer packet for a while, so I'm not sure what temperature we're meant to be at. Perhaps I should get the directions ourselves a little bit of yeast the most important bit I couldn't find my wine yeast so ah well we'll just use this and if the sh if it freaks itself out it won't matter will it anyway we'll pop that in there I think that's all right I don't think it'll kill it. if you have your water too hot it'll die in the arse and cook your yeast if you have it too cold it'll take forever to start fermenting so <laughs> what would Jamie Oliver say we'll just whiz it up a bit Tell you what, this might take more than a bit of whizzing. <laughs> we might we might need Merlin actually to wizard this shit up. <laughs> Put our lid on, which is the right lid now. <laughs> and you've got your little airlock, so you start a sealed fermentation tank, so the air will come up through here and the air, will, air from the outside can't get in, but the air from the yeast farts can get out. Look at that. I don't think it's fermenting yet, but anyway. <laughs> you come down here and check that and I'll go bloop, 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 bloop. And then when it stops going bloop, then you know it's ready to bottle. Well, that's a bit of entertainment for the morning to start off before we get organized. <laughs> Hopefully this works out. We'll find out when we bottle it up. Of course, you, you can taste it when it's only just getting bottled, but it's not quite right because you've got to... Actually, that's going to be the next thing. Are we going to put a little bit of honey in the bottle to get the next bit of fermentation to get the gas, or are we going to use the sugar? Because now that'll be a question for next episode. Things to think about in the week of brewing.